Hey guys, Jenny Patricia here, Kitchen 305, with of course my beautiful, beautiful models here, J&G Entertainment. And in a few minutes, we're going to meet the author of Fear of Love, Maria Laria, who of course we all know has her own show, Arrebatados, in America TV. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and meet her. You guys, I'm so excited. I'm here with Maria Laria. Look how beautiful she is. How are you, Maria? Look who's talking. <laughs> I paid her to say that. <laughs> how are you doing tonight? You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'm just very excited about uh, this event and I really appreciate you bringing me here. And nothing, I'm just uh, excited to be able to meet with the people because I usually, since you do a TV show, you don't get to be in contact. I do talk to them over the phone and when they get there as audience, but it's very nice to be able to meet with them and talk to them and have the criticism, good and bad, because bad criticism is better because you learn. You don't learn from compliments, so I appreciate that. And as you can tell, I'm a little hoarse. <laughs> yeah, I know that there's something going around, but she's a wise woman. I can tell she's a very wise woman. And I am so honored that you're sitting next to me. I, I, I definitely admire this lady. You know, she's a class act, and she has written a fabulous novel. You have, oh, it's, well, I showed it up a little bit earlier. It's Fear of Love, right? Is that the name? So tell me what inspired you to write Fear of Love, or can you tell me, what can you tell me about it? What is it about? What happens, though? I know you can't give away the ending, but tell me a little bit about it. I'll tell you how it happened. My mom had a heart attack, and she was in the hospital, and it was between my sister, my niece, and me. We had to take turns to take care of her. So I used to put her to bed at 12, between work and everything. And then my sister would come around 3 o'clock in the morning, and between 12 and 3, I had three hours where I couldn't talk on the phone or watch TV or anything because she would wake up. So I said, I have to use this time productively. So I said, well, it was a bright, bright moonlight night. How it starts, that's how it starts. In June, supposedly the meteorologists always tell you that yes. there's one day that it's a very, very bright moon. So I started writing about a pianist who's French. And as a little boy, he was abused by his mom, not sexually, just mistreated. And he had a very traumatic childhood. So he grows up in a really bad, dysfunctional family. He becomes a very famous pianist. He's from France. But he's very psychologically disturbed. So he doesn't believe in love. And he has a lot of one-night stands, a lot of flings. He deals with a lot of prostitutes. He goes in, not he doesn't, but he pays prostitutes. And he also had a sexual problem about his homosexuality. He wasn't sure. He thought he was straight, but he wasn't sure. So he was doing all this not to really fall in love. Then he goes to Aspen Music Festival. All the places that the novel happens everywhere I have either lived or I have, you know, been there in those events. So he meets this beautiful Basque ballerina, classical ballerina, and she's much younger than him. So what happens is he falls in love and he's very scared. So he spends three months where it's a passionate love story and then he disappears. But since he's a famous pianist, she keeps following him around the world. And the whole novel is him trying to follow her and her trying to escape from love. How interesting. I love that. What, a, what an interesting twist to the novel. A lot of people are scared, not of love, of falling in love because sometimes of being hurt. Because if you give yourself a love, you might lose yourself. There's a lot of selfish people nowadays, but when you really fall in love, there's no selfishness. So he thought that he would lose himself, and there's a lot of people that, you know, they just have one night stands, and a lot of women that have been mistreated by guys, and they just want to have a baby, and then they leave because they're afraid of being hurt. They're, they're afraid. Would you notice? I will agree with that. I think lately, society, everybody's so afraid to commit. I think marriages, people are afraid to tie the knot. There's this thing, friends with benefits have become very popular. I don't think it's been around in the last 10, 15 years. And I know for a fact, friends are afraid to get married and, and take that extra step. And, and this is some, what you're saying. This is what you're talking about. You got it, girl. <laughs> Oh, that's a high five. That's a high five. See, we're in sync. That's why I love it. Blondes, blondes. Hello. Intelligent blondes. Yes, we are. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And where can people get this book of yours? Well, it's in Amazon. I really went to some publishers and nobody went to publish it. 
their loss, their loss. I didn't want them to have control over the story. Sometimes they wanted me to change the ending and to change a couple of things. And then I said, I just want to do this, whether it's commercially successful or not, it doesn't matter. So what I did, I, I hooked up with this uh, Lightning Source, which is a British self-publishing company, but it's very, very good company. So now we did the co-publishing and it's in Amazon, but I, I can, you know, I sell it through my website too. But I did it in English, Jenny, because... I was going to ask you if it's in English or in Spanish or both. English. Oh, wonderful. Are you going to do a, a, a translation soon? Or? Started translating it and I didn't like the translation. You know, it's true. It, sh it changes, right? When you do the English to Spanish, it, it loses sometimes or vice versa. Because I realized that English is more direct. The novel came out in English. It just, it just happened in English. So when I finished it, I started translating it. And the translation didn't work because I realized that Spanish is more rich. Yes. It's a little more we talk, yes. exaggerating things and <laughs> describing things more. So I said, let me scratch everything and I'm going to start writing it. So it's taken me a long time because I have to go back to the place I was a year ago. But I've, I've done five chapters, so I'm still working. Oh, well, I can't wait to see it. So remember, Fear of Love, Fear of Love, and Amazon. And what is the website if they want to check you out on the website? I want to get the website where they can get the signed copy. Yeah. Oh, a signed copy. I, I, I need my signed copy. Okay. I need my signed copy. So where can they go? That one is marialaria.com. And there's a phone number where you can call and then I can sign it. It's 786-512-7449. But if you go through Amazon, you can just get it. And there are a lot of websites, you know, in the internet, they all have it. But if you want the personal, that's why Jenny did this event, so I can meet you guys, and then I can talk about it and see what people think. I, I, I seriously, you got my attention. I think it sounds like a wonderful novel. De verdad, mucho éxito, lots of success. I have a feeling it's going to be like that. Drama and tragedy. Oh, but that's good. Frankly, there's a lot of things happen, and plane crashes, and then they, 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 they there's an accident. And oh my gosh, so it's a little dance. There's a, there's a lot of things happening. So we have to read it. She can't. I'm not gonna let her tell you guys anymore because you guys have to go buy it so you can read it. But in a little bit, we're gonna go inside and enjoy your evening again, Maria Laria. Thank you so much. Fear of love. Thank you, Jenny. You're the best. Thank you. to Maria and maybe she might want to say a couple of words okay I don't want to interrupt people who are you know eating or anything but I just want to say that um, thanks Jenny for bringing me here and we'll be outside I wrote a novel not because I'm a writer or an author just because I had 
three hours of free time because I take care of my mom who had had a stroke and I wanted to use that time productively. So it just came out of my head and my editor Dave Breaker is around here who helped me immensely. And it's a tragic story about a French pianist who had a very traumatic childhood and he's afraid of loving. But he meets the person that he really falls in love with and the rest, you have to read the book. <laughs> but I don't want to talk too much because I know people are having dinner and so I'm going to be outside and if anybody wants to talk or just, you know, converse about the book or if you want to buy the book or one of my CDs, I'll be outside. But thank you so much for coming. I'm very hoarse, as you can tell. Voy a hablar un poquito en español. Sí, sí, español. Solamente que no quiero hablar mucho porque sé que algunas personas están comiendo. Pero simplemente voy a estar allá afuera. Jenny me invitó y les estaba contando que escribí una novela porque tenía mucho tiempo libre, porque cuidaba a mi madre que estaba enferma. Y quise usar ese tiempo de una forma productiva. Empecé a escribir una novela de un hombre, un pianista francés, que tuvo una niñez muy traumática y tiene miedo a amar, no al amor, a amar. Se enamora de una bailarina francesa y se pasa toda su vida huyendo del amor. Así que ahí está mi editor, Dave Spricker, que me ayuda muchísimo. No soy autora, soy una mujer atrevida que trata de empezar cosas diferentes. Así que si gustan, me gustaría que me dijeran su opinión, si la leen. Gracias. Thank you. Can you guys say thank you, Maria? That a beautiful, beautiful novel. A great story. I think we've all been in that situation where we're maybe a little afraid to love, but maybe this will motivate us to actually do that. I congratulate you. I think you're an amazing role model for everybody. So please, her books are outside. Come and meet Maria Laria. Thank you so much, and you guys enjoy the rest of the evening.